Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Today I'm joined by Don Carr. Welcome, Don. Hey. Great playing, man. It sounds awesome. Uh, thanks, Mitch. Appreciate it. And we are checking out the brand new John Petrucci edition of the Mark II C Plus from Mesa Boogie. The original Mark II C Plus came out in the mid 80s. It was the third ish generation of the Mark series. There was the Mark I, which Mesa Boogie reissued as a King Snake. That was the Carlos Santana kind of, uh, the one that everybody associates with Carlos Santana. Then the Mark II came out. Mm -hmm. There was the Mark II B, which I owned. Right. And then they came out with the Mark II C and later the C Plus, which was kind of a, oh, an optimization of the Mark II C. Yeah, a tweak. Right. You, you owned will. one, right? Yeah, I owned a C Plus. I sure did. Right, right. You waited six months to get it. And <laughs> six long months. Yeah, because they were kind of <laughs> semi custom at that point. Yeah, exactly. That's how they were building them. They were putting them together by hand, one at a time, per order. Right, right. So the Mark II C Plus is sort of the refined version of that whole Mark II era of amplifiers for Mesa yeah, Boogie. Right. And what they've done is they've reissued it here because this is one of the most storied amps in the whole history of Mesa Boogie. So the John Petrucci association with this is that John has a Mark II C Plus that sounds absolutely incredible that he loves. And so we went to Mesa Boogie mm -hmm. and they talked about doing a reissue of that amplifier. And so they've included some of his thoughts on ways to make this even more player friendly, to make it even more usable in a professional situation. And we'll talk about those as we go through the amplifier. So Don, you own the C Plus, as we right. mentioned. Right. What was it that made this such a cool amplifier for Mesa Boogie? Oh, man. Well, I mean, you know, the cascading gain thing, of course, you know, which is incredible. That, you know, gives you a lot of options, a lot of flexibility in uh, the amount of gain and how the gain actually sounds. If you drive the front end harder, it's different than driving the back end harder. The EQ, but mostly it was the fact that it was so tight and so rich and so huge sounding. Right, right. So this cascaded gain thing is a, is a big deal here with the Mark II series. Randall Smith came up with his innovation with the Mark I, where he basically had two preamp stages. You'd plug in, you had a gain control, and then you had kind of a drive control or a second gain mm -hmm. control, yeah. and you'd balance those to really get the front end of the amp screaming to the point where you wanted it to be, to give you sustain or to get a clean tone out of it. Right. Now with the 2C Plus reissue, they've actually simplified this, so you have a single gain knob on the input of each channel, makes it much easier to set things up, and they've kind of gone through and set it up the way that players would have used the original Mark series anyway, so you're getting that same basic effect. Yeah, this is sort of like uh, predetermined sweet spots, if you will. Right, right. So they've set things up so we have three channels. The first is a really clean channel. In fact, we've been trying to drive it into distortion and had it on 10 and trying to get it to break yeah. up. And it has a ton of headroom. So if you're looking for clean sounds, that American sparkling kind of a clean tone, that's going to come out of that first channel here. The second channel and the third channel are actually very similar. The difference between those is really as if you had taken that first drive control on an original Mark II C Plus and turned it up about two notches. So that's really the only difference between these two channels. And then we have some other options for shaping the tone as well. Each channel is set up with a gain control. We have a master volume control. And then each channel has its own bass, middle, treble, and presence control. So you can really shape each channel independently. We also have two graphic EQs, and those are assignable to any of the three channels, or you can turn them on and off using the foot switch, or you can turn them on and off using MIDI. So this tonal flexibility between the three channels and the two EQs is one of the things that really makes this an awesome amp, even compared to the original Mark II C+. Plus. Right. On the original Mark II C+, Plus, you shared the EQ on the two channels. Now we have three channels, each with their own independent EQ controls, and those two assignable EQs, so you can really dig in, shape your clean tone, your crunch tone, and your lead tone exactly the way that you want it. Each channel also has its own independent reverb level control. We have an effects loop in the back, and that can be turned on and off either from a front panel switch, or you can use MIDI to turn that on and off. We have a cab clone built in, and right. we'll be demonstrating that later as well. So you can do direct recording out. You can use this without a speaker connected. So you could just set this up on stage, have a silent stage set up, run this right into your console or into your, uh, your DAW or however you're recording. One of the additions to this version of the C Plus is we also have MIDI control. And not only can you use MIDI to turn functions on and off, you can actually store presets. Now those presets aren't storing like level controls or EQ settings. Right. They're, uh, they're actually just st storing basically switch settings on and off. Right. So you can set up your clean channel with the EQ turned on, with the reverb turned on, with the effects, effects loop, loop on. Yeah. And then you can go to the second channel right. on another preset mm -hmm. and basically have a different EQ, no effects loop, reverb sure. turned off. So you can yeah. store those kind of settings and create presets that way. The Mark II C Plus is a 100 watt amplifier. It's an all tube amp, has an absolutely huge transformer on this side, which it really does. contributes to that beefy tone. Yeah. And then you can switch it down to 60 watts if you want to drop the volume back to a little bit more manageable level. Even at 100 watts, this thing really can be turned down low. I'm surprised how well the master volume works. Right, I know. It's still, you don't lose the character of the amp when you turn it down. Yeah, you can get it down to really conversational levels and still use it, which for a yeah. 100 watt amplifier is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So let's check out some of the sounds and the features that are in this Mark II C+. We're playing it through a 2x12 Mesa Boogie cabinet loaded with vintage 30 12-inch speakers. 
to give you an idea of the character of the three channels, I've set them all up with all the controls to 12 o'clock. And we'll just step through the three channels. Don, you can play here. And we'll just hear the difference between those three channels. So we'll begin with the clean channel. <laughs> That's a really clean, punchy, sparkling tone jumps right out of the speaker. It's really right in your yeah, face. Absolutely huge. I mean, just bell-like clear on the top and beefy on the bottom. Absolutely. Now let's go to channel two. That's our classic crunch tone from Mesa Boogie. We've got the gain set to about five, so there's still a lot more gain to go in this amplifier, but it's nice and tight sounding. The bottom end is very controlled, a lot of articulation on top, and a lot of good punch there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, and uh, as far as like the input sensitivity, it just feels great. You know, it's got just a little bit of squish, but it still stays really articulate. Right. Now we'll go to channel three. So that's very similar to channel two, has a touch more drive to it, and I think pushing that drive a little harder is also giving us a little bit more beef in the lower mid-range. Yeah, you can definitely hear that and you can feel it too. The three channels also offer us different extended features you can use for shaping your tone. If we go back to the clean sound, we can assign the EQ, either EQ1 or EQ2, to that channel. We can use a foot switch to bring that in and out, or you can switch it from the front channel. So what we'll do is I'll have Don play without the EQ engaged. We'll engage EQ1, which is kind of the classic EQ uh, Mesa Boogie V EQ right. shape. And then we've got the uh, kind of the alternate Mesa Boogie EQ shape where the mid-range is pushed up on that. On the two different EQs, we'll switch between those. So let's begin with just the straight clean channel. Now we'll engage EQ1 with the V-shaped curve. And now we'll switch to EQ2, which has the mid hump curve on it. Yeah. That is a massive clean tone with all that mid range punch coming out yeah. of it. It's just huge. It certainly is. So, having just the two EQs with that clean channel really gives us a lot of different tone shaping right there. Now, we could hard assign, if you will, one of the EQs using the switch here right in the center. So, we can, for example, set uh, EQ2 to always be on the first channel. Or we can use the foot switch for bringing those two EQs in and out. There's a six switch foot pedal that comes with the Mark IIc Plus, and that's what I'm using to control the amp today. Channels two and three have a couple of pull functions on their knobs. So there's one on the gain control and there's one on the presence control. So we'll explore what that does for the tone. First of all, let's hear what channel two sounds like, just as it is straight up. Now when we pull the gain control out, we'll engage a little bit of a gain boost there. It's almost as if you've taken the drive control and an original Mark II C Plus and bumped it up just a number or two to give you that little bit extra push. So let me pull that out. And with the push back in. We also have a pull function on the presence knob, and basically what this does is moves the presence control to a different frequency. It's something they kind of discovered by accident when they were voicing this with John Petrucci. So we'll begin with the presence control pushed in. This is the regular setting as you would have had on an original Mark IIc Plus. Now when we pull that knob out, we'll engage the alternate presence voicing. That setting has a lot more cut. Really, it's not harsh, it's yeah. not shrieky sounding, but right. it has a lot more cut. It's really going to go through a mix well. Yeah, it's like a chirp almost, especially on the attack. That really seems to be where it's voiced. So I'm going to push that presence control back in, and we'll listen to the second channel with the two EQs. So again, here's the straight second channel. With EQ1, with the mid scoop. And now EQ2 with the mid bump. On this channel, you can really hear the effects of those equalizers. And of course, we're exaggerating the effect here. I've got the mids pushed up quite a bit, and we've definitely got the mids pulled down a lot on EQ1. But it gives you an idea of the tone shaping you have available with the controls on the channels, as well as with the EQs. Yeah, because that really allows you to set up an actual alternate sound, as mm -hmm. opposed to just shaping one particular sound. It's like, if you get a sound just with the channel that you love, you've got two more options. Right. 
Now we'll go to channel 3. As we heard earlier, it has a little bit more push than channel 2 does, a little bit more beef to it. So we'll go to the straight channel 3 with no switches pulled and with no EQs engaged. Now we'll pull the gain control for that little bit of boost. Now we'll push in the gain control and we'll pull out the presence control. And of course we can engage both the gain control and the presence control at the same time. Clearly this is a very versatile channel for shaping your crunch and your lead sounds because each one really offers you four different sounds. Right. You've got the straight sound, pull gain, pull presence, or pull both, giving you four different very distinct tonalities to work with. Oh yeah, and not to mention the shred control. The shred control. So let's jump over <laughs> and check that out. The shred control was something that was added at the request of John Petrucci because he wanted to be able to shape the amp to use it with his downtune guitars and with his seven string right. guitars. Right. You have all that bottom end and you mm -hmm. want to make those really tight and chunky sounding. Mm -hmm. So the shred control shapes the bottom end, shapes the top end, and I think it adds a little bit of boost in the gain as well. Yeah, and maybe even in the upper mids too just to kind of give it a, you know, that, that thing. That thing, <laughs> The yeah, punch. Yeah. So this makes it great for high gain sounds. It makes it great if you're playing a seven or eight string guitar or if you're drop tuning your guitar. Right. So to demonstrate this, Don's drop tuned down to D on his low E string. I'm going to push the gain up to about 3 o'clock and we'll listen to just the straight channel 3. So clearly that's a great sound just by itself. It's got a ton of gain and it's a huge bottom end sound. But now we'll engage the shred control. That really tightens up the bottom end, really increases the articulation on top as well, the pick on the strings. So if you're doing those low tune kind of things, it's going to be much more distinct when you're doing it with that shred control on. Mm, yeah, a lot punchier for sure. So needless to say, we're talking incredible tonal versatility with the 2C+. Whether you're playing country, jazz, rock, fusion, metal, death metal, <laughs> way down tuned, multi-string guitars, <laughs> right. you know, whatever you you're it. doing, this amplifier can cover it for you. Man, does it sound good. It does. It does. It's just, I can't get over just how present and alive this amp is. Now, one of the great features of this version of the Mark 2C Plus is that Mesa Boogie's included their cab clone circuitry. <sighs> Built right in. Absolutely. Love that. So it has an XLR output on the back, and you can turn the speaker off actually, or you can leave the speaker on, but you can route out of that XLR out, and the cab clone circuitry simulates a speaker cabinet. Mm -hmm. So you could send that to a live sound console, you could send it into your interface in your studio and record directly. Really a handy feature to have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just imagine you pop this thing up on your desktop and just start recording. You can even turn the speaker off using the cab clone and plug a set of headphones into the back. There's a headphone jack on the back panel. So let's listen to the cab clone. There actually are three settings close back, open back, and vintage cabinet. So we set up channel 2 with kind of a crunchy, kind of a semi-distorted kind mm -hmm. of a tone. Let's listen to what it sounds like with those three cab clone settings. We'll begin with the close back. <laughs> Now we'll switch to the open back setting. <laughs> And here's the vintage cabinet setting. As I mentioned earlier, the Mark II C Plus does have MIDI control in it. So there's a MIDI jack on the back. And it's very easy to set up your presets. The presets are actually stored inside the Mark II C Plus, and then you can use any MIDI controller to change among those presets. Now, once again, the knob settings aren't saved. What's saved is all the function switches, the on off for the EQs, which channel selected, reverb on and off, uh, the effects loop on and off, those kind of settings are stored in the preset. Finally, I think we should talk about the form factor here because this isn't a huge head. Even though it's a 100 watt head, it's actually very compact. And as you were mentioning earlier, you carried it all the way across the uh, facility here at Sweetwater, and yeah. it's not too heavy. No, it's really not. I mean, it's surprising. When you think of a 100 watt head, you think of some just, you know, unwieldy beast, and it's really not. And there's even a version that I believe is rack mountable. No kidding. Oh, that's cool. Don, I know you've been really enjoying it, and I've been having a blast having this amplifier here. Oh, yeah. This is actually a very early unit. Mesa Boogie was kind enough to ship this to us early. Yeah, right. I think Petrucci's got a few, but this may be like one of the first ones out there. Right, and speaking of John Petrucci, there actually are two versions of this amplifier. There's a limited edition signed version that's signed by John and by Randall Smith, the designer of the amplifier, and then this is the production version. 
I hope you've enjoyed this look at the John Pertucci Edition Mark II C Plus reissue from Mesa Boogie. Killer sounding amplifier. Up to this point, you've been hearing it with a 59 Les Paul Standard reissue from the Gibson Custom Shop. And now Don's going to demonstrate some single coil sounds. He's got his Strat that's loaded with classic stacks. And uh, we'll play that through the three different channels so you can hear some of the different tones. So, Don, thanks for helping out with the, uh, with the video here. Your playing sounded great and the amplifier's killer. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, Mitch. Yeah, it is. It's a beast, isn't it? Absolutely. And thanks for joining us for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects, and we'll be making lots of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher.